Wow. Wow. We were right on death's doorstep going into the bio week. Game time, Brian here, otherwise known as the mailman, coming to you after a tough fought win. And I will say this. A win is a win is a win. Any win in the NFL, I will take it. Especially after this weekend of football where we saw teams that were undefeated go down. We saw te- you know, we saw the vaunted 49ers where everybody was anointing how great they were. They suffered a rash of injuries and they lost to the Cleveland Browns with their uh, with their rookie backup quarterback. Just goes to show you anything can happen. And I really did expect a close game. I called a field goal game. I expected more points. Looking at the game, there was 20 accepted penalties. 20 accepted penalties. Um, We had 9 for 79. They had 11. Now, there was a few that were not called. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but... Um, I don't find it enjoyable. I don't find it enjoyable to watch a game where there's constant flags. I don't. I don't find it enjoyable at all. And yet, one of the biggest plays of the game where Turpin calls for a fair catch, okay? So Tolbert is blocking the guy. The, the Charger guy puts his hand up through his face mask. Through his face mask. Now, mind you, the the officials had already called multiple hands to the face against the Cowboys in the first half. Put his hand through the face mask of Tolbert, which gave him leverage to shove him into Turpin. Okay, Turpin did not know if if anything was touched. He didn't see that Turpin fair he caught it. He had no idea, so he went and tried to get on top of the ball. That's a big time, big time mistake by the the officials. Um, but we won despite of that. We won despite our head coach, who, quite frankly, um, needs to get his act together calling plays. If I see one more run with Tony Pollard through up the middle with an offensive line that clearly isn't playing great, as far as they're not. Our offensive line needs work to say the least they need to i would say continuity is a good word that's what we need from our offensive line um i like when we run to the edges i understand we can't always run to the edges but we had a lot of you know success i thought rico dowdle came in he had two he had two rushes for uh, almost 12 yards why didn't we see more rico why are we jamming pollard down our throat Because you gave him the franchise? That's on you. We need to go with the better guys. Again, like we get down in the red zone, why aren't we using Hunter Lepke? Why? Why? Our red zone is having issues again. Shout out to Dak Prescott. Ultra Cowboy likes to crap on him and say we can't do this, we can't do that. Without Dak tonight, escaping, making plays. People, you have to remember... What made Dak special was exactly that, running the ball. Dak Prescott rushed the ball seven times tonight for 40 yards with a touchdown. He was our best runner, people. Dak Prescott. Now, I'm not saying we're going to call designed runs, but every once in a while you have to do it, especially down in the red zone, which is where he scored. Teams are laying off at Dak. They think he's afraid to run because of the injury. He looked good tonight. Okay, Michael Gallup, Michael Gallup was targeted 11 times. What It says 10, I counted 11, regardless. 10 or 11 times Michael Gallup was targeted, had three catches, had four drops, including one that went right through his hands for a touchdown. CeeDee Lamb. Let's get to, so you just said what, you just heard what I said about Michael Gallup. C.D. Lamb was targeted seven times. He caught the ball seven times. Brandon Cooks. Shout out to Brandon Cooks. Finally got his touchdown. Looked good. Looked fast on the jet sweep. 
was targeted four times, caught four balls. Again, why we're going to Michael Gallup as much as we are, we need to look into that. Uh, we didn't get the ball to the tight ends as much as I would have liked, but we couldn't get any kind of rhythm. That was my problem. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential here, but we need to get the quarterback and his offense into some sort of rhythm. Um, we got to give credit to Dak Prescott in this game. Um, people want to crap on him and say he stinks. Dak Prescott escaped the pressures a half a dozen times, making three really good throws. Um, the play to Pollard was a great play by Dak and an even better play by Tony to break a tackle and take it upfield. So, um... But I didn't like, you know, too many runs up the middle. It was, it, I mean, it was horrendous. Dak, but Dak, Dak Prescott stats. He was 21 for 30. Now, we've already said he had a four drops by Gallup. <coughs> he would have had another touchdown. He would have had over 300 yards and two touchdowns passing, not counting the rushing touchdown. Listen, Dak Prescott was really good tonight. Uh, was he perfect? No, he wasn't. He made some really nice throws to the sideline. Um, the bye comes at a good time. I know we had a, our offensive line there, but um, we're banged up right now. We are banged up, and we could use a week of rest and a week of getting on the same page with Mike McCarthy. Now, some said... Mike was coaching for his job. I don't know that they would have done that. Uh, I do know, listening to uh, a few people that I know close to the team, they're saying that Jerry Jones was irate and has been miserable and is upset this whole week. So if they would have lost going into the bye, I don't know that they would have pulled the trigger, but I think it would have been discussed behind closed doors. And if to me, once it's starting to be discussed, then I think that's a bad thing. Once it's discussed, you might as well do it. So thankfully, they got the win. There's a lot we could build off of. They got the ball to Brandon Cooks multiple times. He scored his touchdown. C.D. Lamb was a beast. Uh, Dak played well. Um... Sam Williams on defense. Something's going on with Sam Williams. He's just not progressing. He's not getting better. Um, shout out to D-Law. Without D-Law tonight, we don't win the game. As you saw from the live stream, I'm, I've been very critical of Micah Parsons. And I love me some Micah Parsons. I really do. But when you put yourself out there and you do podcasts and everybody has a podcast these days, you know, it's one thing for me to have a podcast, right? But it's another for a professional athlete to have an in-season podcast. You open yourself up to a lot of scrutiny. Um, you know, I, sometimes I think he needs to slow down, if that makes any sense. You need to slow down to get faster. I, it, it, I see some, I saw a few times where he was just going so fast to the outside that the tackle just pushed him out wide, and he was well behind you know, the quarterback. Mike is a beast. He's getting double and triple teamed, but it's no excuse. There was somebody in the chat who said that uh, C.J. Watt gets double teamed all the time and still makes plays. That's what you got to do in this league. Mike is an undersized guy playing the end. I wish they would move him around more. I think Dan Quinn needs to be a little bit more uh, – not show his cards before the, the ball is snapped, you know. Um, you know how, like, we used to have a defense where guys would roam the line of scrimmage and then the last second they would get into their spot. I don't know. We need to come. I think we need to be more creative offensively and defensively. But um, Osa Odigi Zewis, a splash. Deron Bland, oh, my God, Deron Bland. He had a pick six. I mean, we were capitalizing on that. I mean, Deron Bland had a pick six. I mean, everybody wants to talk about Justin Herbert. So if we have a bad defense, or if our defense, we know it's not bad. But if it's not playing great, and we beat Justin Herbert, and we should have had an easy pick six on him. We did have, like, another pick on him. You know, Dak didn't throw a pick tonight. 
It was the Chargers that had the four sacks, people. Dak was under way more pressure than Justin Herbert was. Justin Herbert had a lot of time to throw the ball. So just remember, Dak Prescott was sacked and hurried. He was sacked four times and hurried way more than Justin Herbert was, yet he did not throw an INT. That's a shout-out to Dak Prescott. Um, Listen, we have to be honest. I'm going to keep it 100, whether you like it or not. I'm going to call him out when he plays like crap, and I'm going to praise him when he plays good. And Dak had a good game tonight, a very good game tonight. I'm not going to say great, but he had a very good game tonight. And we need more of what he did tonight. He, He needs to run more. When Dak came out, In the early part of his career, what made him special was extending the plays, like a Tony Romo, extending the plays, giving his receivers a little bit of time down the field. That's when big things happen for this team. That's what we need to do. The bye comes at a great time. You know, our next four games, okay, or or, the next four weeks, we're one behind the Eagles right now, okay? But I'm not so much worried about that because it's a long season. I've told you guys. I'm just going to look at the next four games. We got a bye week. Then we're home against the Rams. We've won our, we've won our last 10 home games. We're beating the Rams. So now we're 5-2. and two. Then it sets up a showdown at the Eagles. I have a splitting. We'll see what the Eagles look like in that game. You know, I think it's a close game. Maybe we lose it. I had us originally losing in Philly and then winning in Dallas. A lot of times, Eagles play better in Dallas than they do at home, non-playoff. Maybe we, we win in Philly, and then we'll see what happens. But, you know, if we beat the Rams, we're 5-2. and two. We lose at the Eagles, we're 5-3. and three. And Then we're home against the Giants. We're 6-3. and three. We're 6-3 and three after 10 weeks. That's good. The Eagles, they're a game ahead of us. The, they host the Miami Dolphins on Sunday Night Football. They're going to have to play a lot better. A lot of people are calling for Miami to win that. So let's just say Miami wins. Well, now we're tied, okay? We're tied in the loss column. Eagles at Washington. We're going to beat the Rams. So you lose at Washington, then we're playing Philly, and we're right back in it. I have the Eagles beating Dallas and Philly, but of of course we got to play the game. It's going to be a close game, especially how beat up both of these teams are. We'll see who's standing at that point. But everything, what I'm trying to get at is nobody's running away from nothing now. Now that we got the win tonight, ugly as it was, everything is close to you together. Don't forget, we'll get to your schedule. You guys have a gauntlet coming up after that. But again, this win saved our division hopes, in my opinion. We could not drop three games back at the Eagles. We just could not. Well, yeah, we would have had three losses. Eagles would have had one. So we would have been two games back. But I'm just glad it's tight. (coughs) We're four and two. Our defense played better. We need to find a – we need to tweak some things. There's just no – no getting away from it. We need to tweak some things. Um, looking at the schedule for the NFC East, just looking at it real quick. Let's go back and see. Okay, so you got um, this Thursday night, you got Jacksonville at New Orleans. That's actually a good game. But Jacksonville at New Orleans. So I'll be streaming that game this Thursday night. Um uh, let's see. Uh, the Giants are home against Washington. So, I don't know who's going to win that game. But, I will say that, um, obviously, one of the NFC East teams are going to win. Unless it's going to be a uh, a uh, a tie. Which, you know, who knows with that. And then, like I said, Eagles host Miami Dolphins um, on Sunday night football. So, that's a hell of a game. Uh so that's what we're looking at this week. 
you know, Dallas, if, if the Giants win and beat Washington and Eagles lose, that's, that, would, that would be a very productive week to have in a bye. I mean, just looking at the odds, just early uh, odds for this week. Early odds for the uh, week. Eagles are a one and a half point favorite at home. So we'll see about that. If Eagle, that's a tough game. If the Eagles win, that'll be a real good win for them. But getting back to tonight's game, that was a season saver. Listen, three and three wouldn't have knocked you out of the playoffs or anything like that. But you needed to gain a game. You got embarrassed in San Fran. You choked it up in Arizona. This is a game a lot of people, all the pundits today, undisputed, they all had them losing tonight. They all had them choking in L.A. Now, what excuse are you going to have tomorrow? What are we going to come up with, uh, you know, tomorrow? There's always something. Being a Cowboy fan is hard goddamn work sometimes. Excuse my language. It just is. It's frustrating at times. I lost my voice, but, you know, listen, there were some huge plays in that game. Hell of a throw. I'm watching the highlight now. Hell of a throw by Dak Prescott to Brandon Cooks. It's about time. Hey, Mike McCarthy, you got to force feed your playmakers. You got to do it. And what I liked about Dak tonight, he audibled a couple times. Once into a run that I didn't like. But regardless, Dak Prescott's better when he's up-tempo, getting to the line early, changing the play, moving the ball. So... I'm not going to hold it, you guys very long. I know my views go down after a win rather than a loss. I'm sorry, you know, people. This isn't a loss. We got the dub tonight. So we go into the bye, get a little healthy, and then come home and take care of the Rams in two weeks. But I will be back here on Thursday. And uh, the only thing else I got to say about tonight is... Fuck them, Cowboys! Yeah! You damn right, baby. We got the dub. Peace out.